Hey, it's Mike with Techie B, and we're going to cover a very serious topic here that, we're, you know, for people that go out of town and play paintball, that travel to events and stuff like that. Get emails all the time about, Mike, I'm about to go to an event, I have to get on an airplane, how do I handle my paintball tanks and this, that, and the other. So I, I got to start this video off by saying if you screw this up, Okay, if you screw this up, you risk going to jail. Okay, if you get on an airplane and your tank looks like this with the regulator still attached, at best you will be arrested, at worst you will face huge fines and possible jail time or both. Okay, so this is where we have to transition from the point of being idiot little aglets and people that don't care about whatever and actually being adults because if you screw this up there are serious adult consequences. Okay, most likely you will have to contact an attorney, most likely you will have to be bailed out of jail, most likely you're going to be arrested. So you have to be extremely careful about this. Compressed air cylinders, now not necessarily paintball ones, compressed air cylinders have killed people on airplanes and have downed entire uh, planes. There was one over here in Florida called Value Jet. It was an oxygen cylinder similar to this with a regulator on the top that blew up and killed like 150 people, okay? The, the plane went into the Everglades. So that's how serious this is. If you screw this up, you will go to jail. Or at worst, you could be killed, okay? If, the, if your tank blows up and blows out the bottom of the airplane, it's gonna take you down with everybody else. So this is life and death, and at best, this could be criminal. So I gotta stress this from the very beginning, traveling with HPA tanks on airplanes is an adult matter. Just because you're 13 years old does not matter. If you do this incorrectly, you risk going to jail. So let's just put on the adult hats here for a second and let's go forward with the video. You have two ways of traveling with tanks uh, or, or getting your tank to a, an event. Okay, so let's say for instance, Mike, I'm going to go next year and I'm going to go play at Huntington Beach. Okay, I'm going to play the, uh, the, the USPL Huntington Beach. That's a couple months away. Now's the time to prepare. It's not time to prepare two days before you're about to get on the airplane, okay? Obviously, you had to have booked your flight a couple weeks in advance. That's the time to start preparing. Two days before you go on the plane, most likely you're gonna have to be buying a tank when you arrive. So you have to prepare a couple weeks in advance before you actually get on the airplane. Let's start off with scenario number one. Scenario number one, I know that I'm going to Huntington Beach. I'm obviously not going to sleep on the sand when I get there. I'm going to be staying at a hotel. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to be staying at the La Quinta Inn. Okay, now I know this. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the camera here. I'm going to be staying at the La Quinta Inn. So what I'm going to do here is this is, this is the worst case scenario. Okay, this is, let's say, two days before you get on the airplane. What you do is you drain your tank completely. So make sure there's absolutely no air in there. You should be able to press down on the pin. You take your tank, you put it in a box, you take your tank to the post office, you tape it up, okay? And then you take your tank to the post office and you tell them, you know, I'm flying to Huntington Beach and I need to ship this to my hotel in Huntington Beach, okay? And they're gonna tell you, Okay, that is gonna cost you $14, okay, to say to ship the tank. 99% of the time, it costs the same amount to ship the tank back from Huntington Beach to Tampa as it does to ship the tank to Huntington Beach from Tampa. So it's gonna be $15 to go there, $15 to come back. 99% of the time, it's the same. While you're at the post office, what I would suggest you do is to ask the person behind the counter, listen, I also will need to ship this same package back to me at this zip code. How much will it cost? Usually they can tell you right there on the spot, Mr. Phillips going to cost you $15 to ship the tank from Huntington Beach back to Tampa. So what you will do is you buy two stamps when you're there. You buy stamp number one. Let's just pretend this is stamp number one. You buy the first stamp for $15 to ship your tank to Huntington Beach. Okay. Then what you do, and then this label goes in the trash. This is my other label that I hand wrote at home. And now I have my other uh, stamp for $15. And what I do is on Sunday, when I'm leaving from the La Quinta Inn or from whatever hotel I'm staying at in Huntington Beach, I, bring, I put my new label on there. 
So, and as you can see, this is from La Quinta Inn in Huntington Beach to Mike Phillips in Tampa, Florida. Now what's going to happen is, is this box is going to arrive at the hotel. People ship boxes to hotels all the time. This is not a big deal, okay? They sometimes will have a room in the back full of packages, full of shipped luggage, full of stuff that people ship there. People do presentations at hotels, people do uh, sales meetings at hotels, people are always shipping stuff to hotels and shipping it from hotels. The hotels do not care. You can call ahead if you want, if it makes you feel better, but trust me, hotels do this all the time. Then what you do, so I get there, I get to Huntington Beach, my tank is waiting for me at La Quinta Inn, I arrive, I check in, hey, I have a package, they give it to me, I open it up, save the box, then what I do is on Sunday when I'm flying back from Huntington Beach to Tampa, I take my pre-made label, and this is going from Huntington Beach to Tampa, I put that on the box, I tape up the box, then I take the second stamp that I bought at the post office for $15. Now remember, there's no post office that's open at 6 o'clock at night on a Sunday night. Most of the time, most of the pack and ship companies aren't even open, like Boxes Unlimited and all these other companies, Post and Pack and all these other little shops, none of those are open either. So if you got to buy a stamp at Sunday at 6 o'clock, you're in serious trouble. I've got my second stamp from the post office, I kept it in my wallet or I kept it in my bag. I take my second stamp. I put it on there, I bring this back up to the front desk, and I tell them, listen, could you please leave, give this to the post office, or to the postman on, uh, on Monday to make sure they ship this back to Tampa. 99% of the time, you will not have any problems doing that. I mean, when we went to like Living Legends, we had like 20 boxes there from rocket launchers to gear bags and everything. They didn't care, they shipped it all out for us, no problem at all. That's the, that's the oh shit way, that's the last ditch way if it's on a Friday, or I'm sorry, like on a Thursday, because obviously it needs a day to get there. If it's on like a Thursday and you, you know, this is last minute planning, ship it there, keep the stamp, ship it back, put your stamp on there, ship it to the hotel where you're going, you should be good to go. That's the worst way to do it. Um, obviously the, the oh shit way. The best way to do it is if you have a couple weeks in advance what I would highly suggest you do is, let's say, for instance, this is a ninja tank, okay? This is a Gorilla Air tank. Most of the time, the regulators on the tanks are going to be Loctited in place, okay? So they're going to be Loctited in place. This is not anything that you can remove at home with a vise or anything like that. You can't pull these regs off. Ship the tank to the tank manufacturer. Okay, so if you've got a PMI Pure Energy, it's got to go to Paintball Solutions. If you've got a Crossfire, it's got to go to Crossfire. If you've got a Ninja tank, it's got to go to Ninja. If you've got a Gorilla Air, it's got to go to Gorilla Air. So well, whoever makes your tank, you have to ship it back to them. What, the, what you do is put a note in there and say, listen, I need, I'm going to be traveling with this tank, and I need the reg broken free from the Loctite so I can unscrew it by hand. Okay, so then what's going to happen is they're going to break it loose, clean out the regs, screw it back in, and send it back in so that when there's no air pressure in the tank, you can remove the regulator by hand. Okay. Regulator comes out. Let's take the other tank. Let's do it on this one. Okay, now like I said, this is where we stop treating you like a kid or stop treating you like a moron and start treating you like an adult. Because if you, if you screw this up, you're going to be in serious trouble. Now, the next thing that people are going to say is, you know, what, what, you can't just have, the reg's got to be Loctited on there and this, that, and the other. What about the, uh, the woman that was killed? Okay, well, her name was Colette Contoys, and you should remember that name. And uh, she survived by her husband, Mark Contoys. And yes, that was a very serious situation. But that took place with a CO2 canister. Okay? Not an HPA tank. The, H, the, the, the high pressure air tanks have grooves cut into them. And I don't know if we're going to be able to see this or not. Let me go over here on the white. They have grooves cut into them so that uh, when the tank goes to unscrew, if you unscrew it about five or six turns, the air will bleed out completely bleed out from it. Okay? Both, all, all high pressure air tanks have this. Now, if you have a CO2 tank, just go to the closest Walmart and just buy another one when you get there. Okay? There's, these things are $20 at Walmart, maybe even cheaper. There's no point in shipping one of these. There's no point in dealing with the box. No point in going to the post office. Leave this at home. 
go to Walmart, buy another one for 20 bucks, and then just leave it there or even return it afterwards or do whatever you want with it or give it away to somebody or something like that. Don't waste your time trying to ship a CO2 tank or something like that. Google a Walmart, find out which one's closest to your thing and just buy another one when you're there. And then when you're there, just give it out to somebody, find a young kid and say, here you go, here's a free tank. Anyway, why, why is it so easy to unscrew these off of here? How come they don't just come off on the gun? Well, when you put air pressure in here, it locks these on here, okay? So if you put air pressure into the tanks, um, you know, when there's 4,500 PSI in here, 3,000 PSI in here, the, tank, the reg is not going to unscrew off the body. Now, I highly recommend, even if they're Loctited on there, let me see if I have it. Where's, the, where's my, uh, oh, here it is. One of the best things you can get for tank threads is TriFlow. And where can you buy TriFlow? MacroLineGuy.com. It's where I always get my TriFlow. It's like five bucks and two dollars in shipping. Put a drop on the threads. It's going to make it screw in and out of the uh, gun a lot easier. Especially if you've got guns like a Mini, where it's really hard to screw in and out. Put a drop of TriFlow on there. Also works with tippins and stuff like that. So let's do an experiment really quick. I've got my scuba tank over here, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you how the safety feature works on the tanks. If you, if you try to unscrew this when it has air pressure in it. So let's go ahead and, and screw it open because people are going to think, isn't it going to shoot across the room? No, it's got grooves cut in it. Okay, so put a little bit of air in. Not a lot. And I can already feel that this is even at probably 200 PSI, this is already getting a lot harder to unscrew. So let's go ahead and let's start unscrewing this. And you're going to see the air vent out once I hit about five turns. Let's see. There it goes. Okay, so I was about two revolutions out, and obviously the tank didn't fly off. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I had to go eleven more revolutions before the uh, tank finally completely unscrewed. There's safety features in here so that you don't have to worry about your tank shooting across the room and killing somebody. That's just for fun. Let's go ahead and do it with the Ninja Tank. Ninja Tank's got a groove cut into the side of it. Same thing as the, uh, as the uh, Gorilla Air. It's a safety feature. Let's go ahead and screw it on. Put a little air in it. Try to unscrew the regulator. Let's see what happens. The reason why I'm doing this is I want people to understand that if you forget that there's air pressure in here and for whatever reason this gets you know welded to your tank if you try to unscrew the and the bottle starts to unscrew it's going to degas so let's put a little air pressure in here okay put about 500 psi in here now I'm Okay, obviously you heard that. After about one and a half revolutions, the, uh, um, the, the tank completely degassed through the notch on the side. Don't have to worry about your tank shooting off across the room as long as you're using a high pressure air tank. So with that being said, let's sum this up. Mike, I'm about to get on an airplane with a tank. What should I do? First things first is if you're about to get on an airplane with a tank, Okay, and you can't get the reg off, you're going to be buying another tank when you get there. You cannot get on the airplane with your regulator attached to your bottle. Can't do it. If you do it, you'll be looking at jail times or fines or being arrested or something like that. Bad news, don't do it. Don't even try it. They will catch it. They inspect all the luggage. If they see the tank with the regulator on it, they will pull you off the airplane and arrest you. No doubt about it. Um, if you have time, if it's the middle of the week and you're flying out on a Friday, mail your tank there. Buy a stamp ahead of time, buy two stamps. Buy the $15 stamp to ship it there, the $15 stamp to ship it back. Keep the, sh the stamp, shipping it back in your wallet when you get to the, air when you get to the uh, hotel. Repackage up the box, put the stamp on there, leave it at the front desk and they'll ship it back, no problem at all. If you have enough time, a week or two ahead of time, take your tank, mail it to the tank manufacturer, whatever it is, Crossfire, uh, Paintball Solutions, if you're using PMI Pure Energy, Ninja, Gorilla Air, whatever, tell them to break the reg loose away from the Loctite, and then what you can do is at your house, you know, the, the night before, degas your tank, unscrew your regulator completely out, set your regular, regulator aside, ensure that your tank, there's nothing on the tip, 
and then have your regulator and your tank, put that in your baggage and you'll be fine to go. You cannot bring tanks on the airplane, you have to have it checked in. Same thing with your paintball gun. Do not try to go through security with your paintball gun unless you want to get arrested. That's, a, that's another thing that's, that'll cause bad news. So hopefully this helps. Um, you know, hope this uh, you know, answers a lot of the questions about traveling. And once again, CO2 tanks, these are $15, $20. Leave it at home. Just buy another one when you're there. Give it away. 20 bucks and put it back in your pocket. So don't worry about it. Thanks for tuning in.